We heard your stirring speech. Can we find something about your background? How long have you been involved in these uh, po political and liberation struggles? Seems like forever, but uh, certainly since the 1960s. Uh, I was a member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee uh, and then uh, was imprisoned uh, in the uh, state of Florida for snatching from the City Hall wall in St. Petersburg a, f a four by eight mural uh, that uh, had a, a racist caricature of African people there. I was sentenced to five years in prison. I ended up doing about two and a half of those five years. When was this? Uh, this was in 19, I was arrested for that in December of 1966. And so off and on, um, in prison, appeal, on bail, then back in prison, I did about a two and a half year stint uh, on that uh, five year sentence. And then what other activities after that? And then uh, f uh, following that, uh, we organized uh, a group called the called JOMO, uh, the Hunter Militant Organization, because of uh, uh, the assumptions that we made about the significance of the Mau Mau Rebellion in Kenya and the assumptions we made about the affiliation of JOMO Kenyatta at that time with that. It was a very popular uh, movement. That's where our slogan Uhuru, in fact, came from, adopted from the Mau Mau. Uh, and uh, subsequent to that, uh, in 1972, uh, we organized the African People's Socialist Party. Uh, the African People's Socialist Party uh, is an organization uh, that exists throughout this country and for, a, uh, in many ways, it's in various other parts of the world because coming out of the African People's Socialist Party, we also built uh, the African Socialist International. We were key forces to that. So now we exist uh, uh, in places in, in West Africa, throughout Europe, uh, in South America, in Colombia in particular. Um, uh, in the Bahamas, uh, etc. So it's a it's an international movement. Well, speaking of Africa, people don't really know much about what's going on there, and uh, what is I mean, it's a huge continent. But what are some of the things that are happening? Well, it's a huge continent, but uh, and it's. Uh, extremely problematic that people don't know anything about what's happening there, especially when uh, so much of what happens in this country uh, has its foundation uh, in an attack on Africa. My presence in this country is a consequence of an attack on Africa. It's not like 400 years ago, um, a group of us got together and said, hey, 400 years from now, there's going to be a need for basketball players in the United States. Let's get a jump on it. Uh, we were all kidnapped, and that kidnapping came as a part of an attack on Africa itself, and not just, you know, uh, by folk here, but from throughout Europe. Europe built itself as a consequence of that, and and not just of that, but, uh, you know, the uh, attack on the Americas that uh, that's responsible for the indigenous people here, many of them being decimated, and many of them in concentration camps that they call uh, reservations now, uh, and many of them actually wiped out in places like Haiti and, and uh, some other places uh, in the Americas. So, uh, uh, the, the relationship that uh, this country has to Africa uh, stares us in the face every day. Every time we hear something about a uh, problem in the so-called ghettos, uh, every time uh, we hear these crime statistics, uh, uh, every time we hear about the poverty, et cetera, uh, the joblessness in these communities, we're looking at a consequence of an attack that was made on Africa some time ago. In Africa right now, uh, we're living uh, with the consequences of, uh, of, as I mentioned, of that war, and it also resulted in Africa being carved up uh, by Europe uh, to serve its own purposes and to these untenable entities that they currently call states and countries, uh, uh, etc. But uh, they are there simply to facilitate the removal of wealth uh, from Africa to various European uh, entities and now increasing and to the United States and increasingly to other. So even though they're not colonies formally, you, you feel that the uh, resources are still being exploited and so on. Yeah, it's not, it's not even a matter of a feeling. It's, uh, it's uh, stuff that you can look at in terms of data and the decisions are made for what happened in, in Africa. They're made uh, in Paris and they're made in London and they're made here in Washington, D.C. Uh, and uh, so while there's not what people refer to as colonies, uh, they, indeed there are colonies. They're just referred to as neo-colonies, new colonies, uh, as characterized by Kwame Nkrumah, who was one of the magnificent leaders uh, in Africa who was overthrown in 1966 by the Lyndon Baines Johnson uh, government, the great liberal here. Uh, and Africa has suffered uh, 
uh, not only as a consequence of the borders, but the fact that it cannot unite, it cannot have access to all of its resources because those resources are, uh, uh, are maintained uh, within these borders that service different uh, European and U.S. Uh, entities as opposed to African, African people itself. What about Rwanda and the Congo? I mean, Rwanda sometimes is now uh, posed as a success. Well, Rwanda is called a success, but even Rwanda, the current Rwanda that I'm talking about now, uh, is an invention of the United States. I mean, this immediate Rwanda, under the leadership of Paul Kagame, who was uh, trained, armed, uh, and sent into uh, uh, Rwanda from Uganda, uh, where they had another U.S. Uh, uh, puppet uh, entity, uh, and they are the ones who uh, chased a French based a French uh, supported a French control of uh, uh, government out of power uh, and ensconced themselves there at course uh, the uh, great cost of uh, of lives that was there and so now you look at Rwanda uh, 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 and Congo where Rwandan troops are, are creating mayhem along with Ugandan troops creating mayhem all for the wealth and resources in Congo uh, and of course, even the guy in Congo uh, owes his uh, his allegiance and uh, uh, his ability to be in power to the U.S. Uh, government as well. So Africa um, and, and Congo, of course, is an extraordinarily rich, wealthy uh, entity. I mean, uh, so many uh, uh, mineral resources come from Congo, including coltan, which is uh, central to the development of cell phones and computers and other things. That's a central mineral for that. And 88% of the world's coal can coltan comes right there from Congo. And so you have these proxy wars uh, f uh, uh, in the interest of various European and U.S. Uh, forces uh, uh, wreaking havoc uh, over the lives of African people. And, and because they are proxy wars and they are invisible hands, uh, the U.S. and the imperialists can say, look, black people are incapable of governing themselves. And, and uh, even the situation that you see happening in Sudan, uh, where you have uh, Darfur, is this, this profound issue that you hear so much about, Darfur, Darfur, and of course things are bad in Darfur as they, as they are in all of Africa, but when, how can you compare what's happening in Darfur to what's happening in Congo where from six to eight million Africans have died since 1998 uh, uh, because of this internecine uh, warfare that's uh, uh, fought uh, in the interest of Europe. And of course the reason you can do that is because the U.S. is engaged in a contest with China for oil uh, in Sudan and they need uh, world opinion to say go send troops into uh, Sudafur uh, so that they can get a stranglehold, a uh, foothold there uh, to take those resources. Let me close, talk about Black is Back. Mm -hmm. um, why, why was that organization founded and what does that mean that black is back? Well, it, and one of the things that means I think that's most important is that uh, we recognize that uh, uh, Barack Hussein Obama uh, is not a representative from this community, from the black community. And uh, unfortunately, more and more, uh, he reveals that to the entire world, that, uh, that he is not, that he has no historical basis there. And it, it challenges this whole notion of a post-racial America, uh, uh, that uh, uh, end of black politics as has been sometimes characterized. And so black is back to say that uh, notwithstanding Obama, who is an apologist for imperialists, uh, et cetera, uh, who challenges the whole tradition of black progressive politic, anti-war, uh, peace, uh, social justice, notwithstanding that, uh, that black is back and we can speak for ourselves. And we felt like it was extremely necessary not only to try and galvanize the black community, but also uh, to intervene in what has po what caused itself an anti-war or peace movement so that it can deal with issues that are critical to what's happening right here in this country and in the African world, like Haiti and like Congo and other places that we're talking about. Because they don't get addressed in, in normally in anti-war mobilization, and certainly not the millions of, of the, the, the more than one million Africans in prison, and certainly not the political prisoners, people who laid their lives on the line so there could be a Barack Obama who were rotting in prison cells. So we felt like it was absolutely necessary to do that. And also, we felt that it gives, for black people to do that, it gives permission to other people with good instincts that, to say that there's something rotten in Amsterdam, that something is wrong, you know, with this guy, Barack Hussein Obama, he's a fraud, he works for imperialism, and they can do that without, uh, I, I think, without having to be uh, fearful of offending all the black people when, once they do that. We heard that you're having a rally uh, soon. Uh, if people are interested in getting a hold of Black is Back, is there a website or a phone number? There is a website. Uh, Black is back, uh, coalition .org. 
Uh, that's the best way, blackisbackcoalition.org. And that mobilization is going to be on November 13th, right here in Washington, D.C. It's going to be a rally first at uh, Malcolm X Park and then uh, march from there to the White House uh, uh, to condemn uh, uh, this uh, regime for not only the crimes that it's committing against all the peoples around the world, but also the crimes that it, it presides over right here in the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you.